Navagon National Park is a national park located in the Gandia district of Maharashtra, India. Navagon, a popular forest resort in the Vidarbha region, the easternmost part of Maharashtra, was built in the 18th century. The picturesque lake set amidst lush green hills at Navagon, has a watch tower beside it. One can get a bird's eye view of the surrounding forest and marvel at the exciting wildlife from the watch tower which consists of a deer park, drive Salem Bird Sanctuary, and three exotic gardens. The Dr. Salim Ali Bird Sanctuary, Navagon is home to almost 60% of the bird species found in entire Maharashtra. Every winter, flocks of beautiful migratory birds visit the lake, a rare treat for the eyes. The national park has diverse type of vegetation ranging from dry mixed forest to moist forest. The forest type is 5A, C3. Southern tropical dry deciduous forest. The most unusual experiences of the Navagon National Park that you will have are going on a jungle safari, staying in a tree top house and riding a sailboat in the lake. Topic etymology The name Navagon comes from the word nave plus gown nave means new in Marathi and gown means village. This area also known as Navagon band locally band means dam in English because of the presence of the water body. Mostly tribal people leaves here and this area was under Gond kings in the old days. Strolling down the lanes of history, we can find traces of the existence of the Kohali community as far back as 1300 AD and beyond. Even in that primitive era, the Kohali community was recognized as geologists in a broader sense, as geophysics may have been in its infancy in our land. This community had developed skills, by inheritance, in excavation and stone construction work. Archives shows, that the grandiose temples at Jagannath Puri and Bhubneshwar, the picturesque lakes of Kashmir and Rajasthan, were constructed by the Kohali community. This can be corroborated from documented reports in the book, Aj B. Kari Hain Talav a Gandhi Pratisthan publication, New Delhi. This tribe headed by the brave explorer Nathan Lewis, in search of a vacation, migrated to central India, concentrating in areas known today as Chandrapur, Gadchiroli, Bandara and Gandia districts, where their population density is pretty high. But as William Blake the poet says that the wheels of fortune must turn, so fortune had in store, something surprising for this industrious community would change the course of their destiny. Rani Durgawati, after her marriage to King Dalpacha the powerful Gond kings, plunged into the affairs of the state. The welfare of her subjects, become her paramount concern. Agriculture was the source of livelihood, and agriculture depends on whims of Lord Indra and his supply of water. To supplement resources, reservoirs, lakes known as tank or talavas in local dialect were essential. This far-sighted consort of King Dalpacha, chose these hardy sons of the soil, the Kohalas, to take up this venture. So, in the year 1300 AD, the great exodus of the Kohalas began in right earnest. They were awarded large farming tracts as incentives, for constructing tanks, canals and waste weirs for storage and supply of water. They were also conferred with the title of Patel or Patel. As the Zamindari and Malgazari system was not in vogue, these patels, patels were entrusted with the job of collecting agricultural cess. Agricultural development being the main item on the agenda of the queen, two brothers viz. Kolu and Chimna Patel of the Kohali community, were delegated with the task of constructing a lake at Navagon in the year 1300. From here begins the saga of Madawarao Patel's ancestors Kolu and Chimna, scions of Bija Patel Dingarwar. This diligent brother duo, first made alternate arrangements to resettle the displaced inhabitants of twelve villages, that were going to be affected by the construction of lake and that is today's Navagon village. Hundreds of laborers were employed in construction of the lake and dam wall. Mode of payment to laborers was in the form of conches and mollusk shells. Herds of cattle were pressed into service, to trample the freshy excavated and water-sprinkled soil dumped for the dam wall, to provide solidity. Water stored in the reservoir, would be provided free of cost to all farmers. After completing the dam, to express their gratitude to God, a fish of the wadis species was caught and adored with thirty tolas of gold ornaments and again released in the tank. This fish was reported to be sighted for several years, resplendent in all its ornaments. While constructing the dam, a temple of God Hanuman was simultaneously constructed. Here, the lookers on the construction site, first paid obeisance daily, before commencing the work. For accumulation of water, a 200-yard sloping waste weir was built which also facilitate eel fish from the back waters of the sea to enter the lake by rivulets for spawning. 
The GOVT took over the management of this dam in 1951. They dismantled this waste weir and reconstructed another waste weir in the form of waterfall. Kolu and Chimna Patil had seven sisters, and in their love for them, constructed a tank bund and named it as Sat Bahini or Dam of Seven Sisters. Kolu Patil was childless and to keep alive his memory and as a tribute, the hillock within the dam was named as Kolhasar or Kolu Patil Lake. Eleventh line generation of Chimna Patil viz. Madawarao Patil, has son Srinarayan Patil and grandson Bimson Patil are today residing at village Dabe Peoni which is 10 km from Navagon Band in Moragon Arjuni Takuka of Gandia district and easily accessible to vouch for the authenticity and veracity of this write up. The island in the middle of the lake is known as Maldinger and was used by the villagers as a refuge from the marauding Pindaris, a tribe of professional robbers. Significance It is located in the eastern part of Maharashtra state and covers an area of 133.78 square kilometers. It has great importance from nature conservation point of view. It is indeed nature priceless assets and beckons one and all to enjoy its picturesque landscape, its pure and fresh air. It has got immense potentials from biodiversity conservation point of view. One can also join the jungle safari and stroll through the beautiful forest, crossing paths with leopards, sloth bears, gowers, sambars, chitals, and langors. Staying in the unique tree top house, riding a power or sail boat on the lake, are thrilling pastimes. Nearly 50,000 tourists visit this tourist complex annually. Places of interest around the national park are Nagzira Wildlife Sanctuary 60 km, Itiado Dam 20 km, Tibetan Camp at Gothangan 15 km, and Pratapgad 15 km. Ecological or environmental values It is an important conservation unit in central India in general and Vidarbha in particular. It acts a green lung for the adjoining human settlements and helps in maintaining the environmental balance. Topic: <inaudible> Zoological values. Though Navagon is better known as a bird sanctuary, a number of wild animals could also be cited. The vertebrate fauna includes, besides a number of fishes, 209 species of birds, 9 species of reptiles and 26 species of mammals which includes tiger, panther, jungle cat, small India civet, palm civet, wolf, jackals, bisons, sambars, nilgais, chitals, wild boars, sloth bears, and Nathan Lewis in this national park. Botanical values. One of the unique features of this sanctuary is the existence of diverse vegetation type ranging from dry mixed forests to moist forests. Its forests belong to the category of Southern Tropical Dry Deciduous Forests 5A, C3 as per the revised classification of the forests by Champion and Seth. This sanctuary serves as a living repository of various economical, medicinal, aromatic, ornamental plant species. It includes teak, haldu, jamun, kawat, mahua, ain, bhel, and bhor. Topic: <laughs> Geological values. This sanctuary exhibits an amazing diversity of terrain, and the altitude ranges from nearly 30 meters to about 702 meters above the mean sea level, which is the highest point of the sanctuary. The typical geological formations are Sicoli series having number of formations made of phyllites, slates, chlorites etc. and saucer series. The rocks of the two groups appear to show difference in chemical composition of lime-bearing rocks. The mineralogical difference is that the rocks of saucer group commonly contain felspar and biolite but no chlorite whereas those of Sicoli group contain invariably chlorite, rarely biolite and no felspar. All this is coupled with a diversity of terrain having steep ridges, narrow valleys and deep gorges with varying altitude. Threats 
Human wildlife conflict is common, with killing of domestic livestock by tigers and leopards as a frequent phenomenon in the area's neighboring villages. This has an adverse impact on the economic condition of the local people and results in antagonism towards the management. In many years there have been up to three people and 30 to 50 cattle heads killed by tigers or leopards. <inaudible> Biogeographic zonation As per the biogeography classification adopted by Wildlife Institute of India, duration, this sanctuary is classified as follows. I Biogeographic Kingdom, Paleotropical E Sub Kingdom, Indomalaysian E Biogeographic Zone 6 Deccan Peninsula IV Biotic Province 6B, Central Deccan. This biogeographic zone is one of the least protected biogeographic zones in India, rich in floral and faunal diversities. Hence it needs high degree of protection. Topic: <laughs> Location. State: Maharashtra. District: Gandia. Tassel, situated in Arjuni Tassel of Gandia district, circle. Geographically the area of this national park comes under the Nagpur circle of the state forest department. The administration and management of this sanctuary comes under the control of the Chief Conservator of Forest Wildlife, Nagpur. Division, the administration and management of this sanctuary comes directly under Conservator of Forests Wildlife, Gandia. Nearby, Nagzira Wildlife Sanctuary 60 km, Idiado Dam 20 km, Tibetan Camp at Gothangan 15 km, and Pratapgad 15 km.